Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My ex and I were together for almost 20 years. We never got married because it never felt necessary and we were child free. I had problems with birth control, so he chose vasectomy. I found out that he cheated on me three years ago and I left him. He got with his affair partner. Six months later, I heard that they were married. I found out I was pregnant with my current boyfriend a year into dating and even though we still weren't there in the relationship, we thought that we could make it happen and sure enough, we are very happy and we love our little family very much. My ex kept texting me on occasions like birthdays and holidays. I never answered. But when he heard about my daughter, he sent me a lengthy and hurtful text about me cheating on him, and he never texted me again. I never answered. A few months later, I discovered he passed away. This was about four months ago. His wife is apparently giving birth any time now. I was surprised. I was contacted by a solicitor to tell me that I have inherited my ex's estate. He had left everything to me besides some of his parents' pension and his nephew. I got a letter from him apologizing for what he did and saying he loved me and wished me and my family happiness and he wanted to help with that. Now his wife and parents are very angry and demand that I leave them everything. I don't know. Would I be the a-hole if I kept it? Because that is what I want actually and what he wanted. OP's ex is a fair partner and her family can demand whatever they want. I wouldn't even engage with them. The likelihood is that his wife's child is not his, and he knew it, which would explain why he left everything to OP. I have a hard time going against dead people's wishes. You can't talk to them, so OP should just keep the money in my opinion. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Pregnant Pony 70 says, Flip the script. They would give you nothing. Up to you if you want to keep it or ration it out. People get really weird about inheritance money and will actively destroy their own families over jealousy and the such. Lil Chizai says, not the a-hole. His current wife cheated on him and he knew it. That's why he left everything to you. Block all of them and go no contact. It's a gift and yours to keep. Do not give them anything. Cool Star 2808 says, it was his wish for you to receive the money. It would be most respectful to honor his wishes, even if other people aren't happy with that. I'd block them and move on. My father got remarried to his affair partner in February. She is heavily pregnant with his kid and due any day. My mom was destroyed by the affair since my dad forced her to give up her education to raise us kids, and he would always get jealous and refuse to let her work, even if she wanted to after we were grown up. My mom just hit 50, and she laments that she wasted her life on a loser who ended up ruining their family. My dad has destroyed my mom for over 30 years, keeping her in a desperately sad marriage and he and his new wife go out of their way to taunt my mom. I hate my dad with a passion and have basically locked him out of my life. I haven't spoken to him since their divorce. I went over to my grandma's house to drop off an iPad so she can stay in touch with the family when I saw his new wife trying to get down my grandma's very steep stairs. She had obviously been there for some reason. I waited at the bottom of the stairs for her to climb down, but she was without my dad and kept wobbling everywhere. She probably couldn't see her feet, and she kept stopping. She started crying halfway down and saying, I bet you're enjoying watching this. Go and tell your mom you saw me suffer so you two bees can laugh about it together, etc, etc. I was getting no enjoyment from her suffering. I just couldn't even bear to want to help her to be near her. She has called my mom every name under the sun. Why the duck am I going to help you? Eventually, she got down the stairs and left. She was driving even though I'm pretty sure she shouldn't have been. My grandma asked why I didn't help. She had been watching this from the window, and I said why on earth should I help her? She laid into me that I'm a heartless a-hole, and that woman is carrying my sibling like it means anything to me, or like I give a crap. She kept repeating that it was basically decency that I should have helped, but I feel like it's obvious there's so much anger there, and it's best we just keep away from each other. Well, OP is in a tough situation. She has shown no kindness to OP or OP's family, so OP doesn't have to either. It is human decency to do so, but OP doesn't owe it to her. Also, she didn't ask for help. Why would OP assume she needed help? It wouldn't even occur to me that a pregnant woman needed help getting down the stairs. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Pure Cup says, Not the a-hole. 
Ask Grandma what basic decency your dad and his affair partner have shown your mom by constantly taunting her. Honestly, your grandma sounds like just as much of an a-hole as your dad and stepmom. You don't owe a-holes anything beyond initial basic politeness. And you sure as crap don't owe such a group of a-holes anything at all. Deleted user says, Not the a-hole. You could have been the bigger person and helped her. But I wouldn't want to either. If she basically needed help, she could have asked. And with social distancing, you should be giving a pregnant woman two-meter space anyways. Che Lao Te says, Clearly unpopular opinion at this point, but I think everyone sucks here. Two things come to mind. Treat others as you'd want to be treated, and be the bigger person. Imagine how you'd feel if something happened. Thankfully, nothing did. But just imagine how bad, persecuted you'd have been. Just be the bigger person. Respect the fact that there's an innocent child there too, who may one day see their mother the same way you see her and reach out to you. I'd see it more as helping protect the life she's carrying than the mother. Well, I, 24, am the oldest child in a family of four. Me, my mother and stepfather, and my sister, Jay, 17 female. I'm a product of a fair, and I knew it since I was six or seven years old. I had a normal childhood. At least I had a bed to sleep on and food to eat and I was not beaten by a drunken father. When I was seven, my mother and her husband had a baby girl, Jay. She became a favorite one in the family. My mother loved her because she was a girl, her husband because she was of his own blood. Yes, all the ideologies are still strong in my country. Our family wasn't poor, and Jay got the best. Toys, parties, education. I went to a local public school, Jay to the private institution. She had birthdays in the equestrian club, I never had a birthday party in my life. Same with the tech. My only devices were a laptop and a phone. Gifts for my grandma on my 12th birthday. Jay had her own room with gaming console and wall-mounted TV. Same goes for vacations, free time, and many more. At 15, I left home and started living with my grandma. She, and my part-time work, managed to help me with my hobby I had since I was nine, aviation and engineering. I graduated and got a scholarship at a not very bad university. Now I'm an aircraft engineer, my childhood dream, and slowly starting my own life. My parents were never heard from since I left them, until yesterday. My mother called me and asked for us to meet and talk together. I asked why. She said she wanted to restore our relationship, her as a parent, mine as a child. My answer was, I never had a good childhood with her as a parent, and if she wants to become a good parent for me, she can start with giving me things I was deprived in my childhood like a TV, or gaming console, or even money covering my basic needs like transportation. I still don't have a car because I can't afford it. She called me a greedy a-hole and hung the phone up. I just don't know who of us is right. Am I the a-hole? Edit, to make it clear. Aircraft engineers, especially with a little experience, aren't getting paid very well in my country. I'm still struggling to pay my own bills, and I have literally zero free money, especially after the virus. I think OP is demanding those things not because he wants them, from her at least, but because his parents made it clear that their love was directly tied to material possessions. OP's mother called because after treating OP like crap his whole life, she wants to make amends. Emotional pain being the only real thing she gave OP consistently throughout his life, and OP took his opportunity to throw some of it back at her. My advice is OP needs to decide whether he wants a relationship with her. If so, OP will need to let go of the past. If not, he should decide if he needs just continued radio silence, or if he needs to talk to her and explain in a more straightforward manner why it's not going to work. And now let's hear if the community agrees with me. Deleted user says, No amount of material goods will ever make up for the way they let you down. Trust me. Frankly, I would just walk away. They will all be empty gestures, and none of it will ever fill the hole they left in your life. Live your life as you have been without them. Casada123 says, Not the a-hole. It seems less about the material goods themselves and more about the idea that your mom, both parents, need to make up for how they treated you in the past. You're rightfully hurt, and it makes sense that you would want to see her be more apologetic than she is. Thick Deeks says, Not the a-hole. I'm kind of on the fence on whether everyone sucks here. It's ducked how you were treated as less important by your mom and stepdad and I can understand the hostility and why you would request money or gifts from them. But do you genuinely want to have a good relationship with her, 
or do you just want her to make up for the lack of financial support and attention she gave you as a kid? I, male 24, have been self-employed for roughly over two years, right after graduating college in 2021. While in college, I began a side hustle which eventually became very profitable and is my main business. All of my work is done from home. I'd like to say I'm pretty good with budgeting and handling my money. It was not easy to build up and took some time to get going, but now I'd say it's been very rewarding and I don't take a single day for granted. However, my mother occasionally criticizes my financial decisions. She's known for her financial control, handling all finances while my dad was the sole earner. She refuses to let him handle it because of his buying habits. Despite her good budgeting, she's particular about family money and emphasizes financial support among siblings. She has always told my siblings and myself to support each other financially as we grow up, since she technically didn't succeed financially as well as her siblings, my aunts and uncles, and always despised them a bit for not offering to help out our family. With my business, I've been able to live comfortably and just got married this past year, paid off all my school and car loans pretty quickly, built up a beefy savings and retirement, and now my wife and I have decided to build a home. With how much my income had coming in, I wanted to give back to my parents and was able to pay off a huge chunk of their mortgage. I figured this would allow them to potentially clear up their other debt or help my siblings with some of their debt. They were very thankful for it. Well, at least my dad was. So my mom and wife don't necessarily get along the best and have had many arguments over the years. All the arguments stemmed from my mom. Over months, my mom implies paying off their house doesn't excuse me from further financial assistance. Her consistent money-related conversations, often playing the pity card, create frustration. There's been a few times where she has told me how important it is to help my sister pay off her school debt. One time, she said, while he has it nice, some of us actually have to struggle still, right in front of my siblings and I. Even during a rant with my dad once, I've heard her say, sometimes I wish he just never paid off our house, since she's unhappy that I'm not as close to her now that I'm happily married. My brother just recently proposed to his girlfriend, and my mom was trying to convince me to help pay for some of the wedding expenses. I can also tell she disagrees with my wife and I choosing to build a home that's on the higher end. She found out I donated several times to the community and preferred I help my siblings instead. I could keep going with how many times she's played the pity card on me, but that would be a novel. So all in all, it's exhausting for my wife and I having to deal with this and the indirect shade on our financial decisions. Sometimes I question if I appear selfish or if my mom oversteps boundaries and lacks respect. I'm a dinosaur, roar, says. If she even wishes out loud again that you never paid off their mortgage, you should ask for them to pay you back. Electronic number says, your mom is not overstepping boundaries. She's long jumping over them. What she proposes is not generosity and not helpfulness, but financial enablement. For people to be financially secure in their lives, they need to build the skill to operate within their means. They need to learn to avoid debt traps and plan ahead for the future they want. Yes, sometimes they need help learning those skills, but if they are reliant on others, they will never be able to be independent to teach independence to others. You gave them a generous gift, but it doesn't mean you are obligated to give other people more. They have an opportunity to learn from your success and ask about how you financially prioritize things and that is likely to help them more in the long run than a cash infusion that can be mismanaged. My fiancé Steve asked for my hand in marriage, and our wedding will be this summer. Naturally, we're both very excited, and have been for the past months. We've been together for eight years, and have gone through college together, traveled the world, and have cultivated a large but close friend group we're very happy with. He has a sister who has always kind of felt like a one-upper on him. In the past, I've tried to be the voice of reason. She was kind of lonely, didn't have many friends, and one past painful relationship. So we have tried to include her, patch up the relationship and so on, but it never really became a close relationship. The reasons why have always been there looking back. She either acts jealous towards me, or he announces anything special. She has to one-up him, be the center of attention, etc. He says it has always been this way, even back when they were children. There's this weird unspoken competition between her and everybody else in the family, where she is always trying to belittle another person to steal the show. Needless to say, it has become quite annoying, but neither of us so far have lost our temper with her. 
A few days ago at a family get-together, they were drinking wine and cheering, and his sister and her new partner of one and a half years announced their engagement out of nowhere seemingly, just shy of a month after moving to the city together. We're happy, smiling, trying to push away the weird gut feeling that comes creeping up. But then, we both catch a glimpse of her ring finger and suspect they copied our ring. After a while, it sank in. It is an exact copy of the engagement ring her brother had carefully picked out for me. We tried to take the high road, congratulated, but soon thereafter left for our house. In the past few days, both of us have been very upset, disappointed, angry, and we are also weirded out by it and incredibly put off. I'm trying to contain myself. I'm telling myself that it's only a materialistic thing and that if she's found happiness, we should be sharing that. But on the inside, I am fuming and so is my fiance. Update. No matter if accidentally or on purpose, this does not take away from the significance of the ring my fiance gave me and put so much thought into. The memories it holds, all of our past adventures are still unique to us. And it might have been a wake-up call for me in terms of seeing clearly what my fiancé has always told me. From now on, I will not include her anymore. I will limit our contact and keep her on an information diet. Danny M.W. says, This is not a problem unless you make it one. Perhaps she is trying to copy you to annoy you. But if you just ignore it and don't let it bother you, it will not bother you. If she truly is that pathetically competitive, you should feel sorry for her as she has mental health problems. But you should not let this make you develop a competitive streak yourself. Inconceivable 76 says, Look, even if you are right, so what? People that enter into one-sided competition with someone else are insecure people. Laugh about it as a couple, shrug it off, pity her for being like this, whatever. But if you get upset and righteous about it, you are entering the competition. Is that what you really want? Lulu42 says, Most engagement rings fit three types, as far as I can see. It's entirely possible this is a coincidence, unless your ring is super unique. And I find it wildly unlikely someone is out there getting married to one-up you. She just wanted to get married on her timetable. So I wouldn't let it bother me if I were you. If anyone else comments, and they won't, because no one else notices wedding rings, you can say, yeah, I guess you really liked the way it looked, and let the listener draw their own conclusions. If you can get an unbiased person to genuinely believe this is a game of one-upmanship, and it's not just you two seeing coincidences, it's not unusual for people of the same age range to hit major milestones around the same time, then I'd keep her on an information diet.